Hello and welcome to the All Night Gamers Podcast, episode 91. Hi, hello, hi, hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us for a show. Cameron got engaged, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I did. We've got a uh, engaged man in the building. Congratulations, good sir, from Alex thank and you, I. I assume you. Cooper as well, yeah, even though yeah. he's continuing his streak of not showing up. <laughs> to be fair, for this week, he's actually got something. He's uh, in the graduation band. Oh, is that tonight? Graduation's not, but they've got practice. Yeah. Well, I figured he was going to be busy for several weeks around this time of year anyway, because, you know, school ending, final concerts, and the graduation band, and finals, and all that lovely end of school year garbage. Yeah, we'll probably see him in two weeks since next week's finals. We better. It's almost time for Summer Game Fest. Do we know anything? Is that happening this year? Didn't Jeff Keighley say it was, but he might have canceled Oh, Ju- it. June 9th. No, wait. Summer Game Fest. Returning live. On, okay, so when when you the Google thing that shows up on the side it still says 2021, but yeah, they they got a website up. June 9th is the kickoff. Uh, at a let's see, 1 p.m. Central Time. June 9th Interesting. is. Okay. A Thursday. Why Why a Thursday? Why not a Saturday? Uh, why can't we let people watch this? I'm going to be at work. So <laughs> awkward. I'm also going to be at work, yeah. I assume. I, I, I hope I'm at work. They're not getting back to me. but Dude, I am I still don't have a start date. That's like the awkwardest date they could have picked. Yeah, really? Like a Thursday? Jeff Keeley, you could have picked Any Friday. Day. You could have picked the next day, and then most people could watch it. Yeah, at least I would have had a chance. Actually, that would have been. Yeah, but, that would have been my off Friday for my schedule. I would have been off. Yeah, like Jeff, just, Jeff, okay, baby, come on, heck? come on, Jeff. The, the worst part is, even if I like am not like I don't have my start date by then, or you know, it's not like already started by then because I hope I have a start date by then. Um, but like if I haven't started by then, I'm gonna be in a hotel. Because I'll be waiting to move in to my new apartment. So I won't be able to watch it regardless. So, yeah. Uh, that, uh, I'll watch uh, it. That uh, hiring and manager. Be... Yeah, maybe we should make the hiring manager listen to this podcast. Get a little hint to uh, speed up. Let's go. Let's get, let's get this going. Come on. Um, I'll watch it and be bored. Because I don't have people here with yeah, me. Yeah, I was going to say, like, being... I'll probably uh, put it on and... I don't know. I've been going into the uh, the office all this week, actually, which I know is only two days as of right now, but I'll be going in all this week, and I'm going to try to do that more. I, it seems to like help my work-life balance if I don't work in my house. I don't know. Maybe if you yeah. went all those days leading up to it, you could be home. Well, it's not like I have to. It's more like... It's, it's a choice. It's a separation. Not, yeah, and like I've I've done a pretty good job with the uh, like making my office the black void of suffering. And, like, yeah. if I'm in there, I'm working, and I'm not in there, I'm not working. But it helps a lot more anyway just to clean the whole apartment of work. So No, fair, uh, fair, fair. And, I, who, I, like, the only reason it's so good this week is because, like, I've actually – I took the TV I, – I, I, we talked about this previously. The, the TV that's behind me was my bedroom TV. I took that mm. out of my bedroom so that I would stop watching YouTube until 1 in the morning and then waking up very sleep-deprived every day. So now that I did that, I'm actually going to bed on time. Like, it actually worked, surprisingly, and which means I'm able to get up early and not be tired. And so I can get up early and go to the office and not have to work super late because I woke up late like normal. Um, I mean, a change of pace will work for a while, but it usually sets in and then the change stops working. Like, there's been studies on productivity like that. Yeah, that's why, like... I, again, like, it's only been two days, so we'll see. Oh, my God. Okay, fine. I'll stop talking. Okay, so now that they've calmed down. Anyway, TLDR. Yeah, I'm going in the office a lot. We'll see if it holds up. But, like, I even, like, meal prepped and stuff. It's been, it's been a, Ooh, it's gonna be a solid week. Yeah, meal like, prep. Yeah, so, like, I've got, like, my morning down to a science, what I need to do. And that way I can still get like home in a reasonable work. time. Yeah, and it also keeps me from eating, like, garbage. I don't, like... Oh, that's fair. I I don't get something quick which is usually unhealthy at work 
or if I don't eat at work, I don't come home starving and then just eat everything in front of me. So eat all that you can see. Yeah. So uh, my problem is I just need a grill because if I grill, I will grill like seven pounds of food at a time and then just chop it up into portions and cut it away because like, gr oh my god, grilling food like grilled food is so easy to keep in the fridge and mm -hmm. mm, good stuff. Anyway, uh. What you been up to, uh, Alex? We already know what Cameron's been doing. Uh, I had to go to the band banquet thingy. How was that? Band banquet. It's okay. I had to set it up with. I had to help them set it up, but one of the dudes is. smoked barbecue, mm -hmm. and it's really good because it. But you can definitely tell because it leaves like uh, smoke residue on. Oh yeah, you, you, and... uh, your hands smell like you stuck them in a pile of ash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good barbecue. Uh, we actually had barbecue catered to the company today for this thing we've been doing, which I won't go into. But it's so disappointing because it's Lol Lawler's, which I think is a chain. Uh, I'm not sure if Maybe. there's one in Auburn or not. It might be a local Huntsville thing, but I'm pretty sure it's a chain. <laughs> um and. Yeah, it's it's definitely a chain. Um and like it's okay barbecue, but all these people in the department are not southern. There's like three southern dudes here. It's like me, in... me and then uh one guy from Texas and okay. then there's like one guy from Florida. But so many people are like from the Midwest, like from Ohio State and Cedar Rapids. So you got kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, so all these people are gassing up this Lawler's barbecue. And I'm over here like this is like mid. This is big mid. Like, thank you. I mean, it's free food. I'm not going to complain. I didn't say I will anything. I always know? take free food. Like, I'm, I will definitely shut up and eat it. But like but... it's got that like that sweet slaw with like it feels like they put sugar in it. And it's ugh, and there's like nothing but cabbage. Like there's no other vegetables in the slaw, it's just yeah. wasn't good. Like it's just so so mid. People, these folks don't know what they're talking about. There's a different people yeah. who know. <clears throat> I'm I'm hoping to show one of my coworkers uh, some actual Southern barbecue at the mm -hmm. lake for Memorial Day, and I'm hoping that he'll come back and then start hating on this barbecue as someone who's not a Southerner, and. Mm -hmm get somebody on my side because i don't want to be some guy just like bragging about how much is better be that kind of white knight anyway uh so yeah uh <laughs> video games we're all, we're video gonna... games <laughs> maybe well, I, I enjoy the i enjoy the small talk at the beginning it's fun uh so first off yeah that uh, nintendo any world presentation sure was speaking of mid uh that indie world it was presentation okay. it was fine um i didn't see it no silk song <laughs> <laughs> Look, dead. we said it wouldn't be there. People, Silk Song fans have lost it, man. Yeah, my coworkers didn't want to listen to me about it. It's like you guys, don't, like, I don't think you guys understand Nintendo. <laughs> they're like, it will be there, and I'm like, mm, no, no, no. It's, no it's like, look, if I know Nintendo, they're going to announce it on Twitter before. Anything. Well, Nintendo's not in charge of this, but if they are in charge. Then they're gonna wait till it's closer to release for yeah. an indie game. Um, I was I I started watching it and then somebody at work was like, "Hey, get on this call real quick and help me with something." So I I only caught like the first five minutes of it. But from what I from what I uh, looked online afterwards and stuff, people's reactions it seemed like it was like okay. I mean, nothing looked bad, but as per typical indie world, it's usually just like cool i guess mm -hmm. um so Same. i don't know if you're a really big indie fan i'm sh i mean you won't hate it but you won't have your mind blown there's no crazy reveal um i mean i still like the indie world because it's like oh here's like a small thing to yeah, i mean um, it's definitely healthy for the environment like get some airtime to the smaller devs yeah, and games that otherwise wouldn't really be talked about. Speaking of indies, though, and it's not on this, and I don't remember if we've spoken about it before. Uh, <coughs> but I remember reading this article. This indie dev talked about how they put their game on Game Pass, and their sales have not recovered. 
Like they had like consistent sales after. So at the beginning of when the game came out, they put it on PlayStation Plus. But you know that only runs a month. Yeah. So it built them good hype, and they had like decent sales from that. Like it stayed consistent, and then Microsoft was like, "Here's money." They put it on there. The money they got is not making up for the money they've lost from the sales they've gotten. Yeah. Yeah. If it had stayed consistent sales. Interesting. That doesn't really surprise me. Because, like... Do they uh, get, like, regular payments based on how many people play They get game? one payment from Microsoft when they initially sign up. Oh, so that. you just... They get a one-time license Lump sum, yeah. for i i well, i mean yeah. it has to be for some limited time cuz they were moved right occasionally but just a lot longer than yeah. what PlayStation would do which um, i mean <clears throat> would help like if you're if you're you know struggling fine throw it on there but like i think i think that's part of why like so many devs like turn to epic Right, is that they still it's not are that they to... turn? Epic will offer you a lot. Epic offers them a lot of money, and you yeah, get, like, I mean, like as much as we like to badmouth Epic, they like for developers. Support, yeah, they support the devs a lot more. I mean, that's the whole reason the whole Epic Game Store thing was a big fiasco a couple years ago because they were like, "Hey, well, we we will take half of what Steam takes, and mm. here's a bunch of other benefits too, et cetera, et cetera." So. Yeah, money to help develop. Like it's this is what like, goes all back into the master plan, right? You you appear really nice, you get all the game licenses, and then you turn on Apple just like that. <laughs> it's a yeah. it's all part of the plan. Um. Also coming up uh, is your last chance to use credit cards to add funds on the Wii U and 3DS eShop. Uh, Alex mentioned it before the show, but you can still. Use a credit card to add funds to your Nintendo account on the Switch. So, like, if you added like a hundred bucks on your Switch account using a credit card, that same money or whatever money was left would still show up on your Wii U and 3DS if you have the same Nintendo account on those devices. But you can't add it directly through the Wii U and 3DS. That's coming up on the 23rd, I think. You'll no longer be able to do that. So, yeah, it's about a week out. Yeah, and you'll still be able to use uh, eShop cards until August or September. Uh, yeah, May 23rd, that gets taken away, and then August 29th, uh, they take away the eShop cards. So I guess one thing I need to do is go look. I so have. I found a list. Let me pull it up. This is actually probably a pretty good time to talk about it. A couple honorable mentions. I know. I think we've talked about this when it first became... A, a thing like that they were going to cancel it but i did find oh the, the, post on the i still need to pick up the mega man stuff the battle network stuff that you can yeah. do the ds so this obviously is it's not a very comprehensive list but just to go over the main hitters again so mario brothers 3 virtual console mario advance 4 has all the e-rater levels on it duck hunt and uh hogan's alley lets you use the wiimote instead of a zapper so that way yeah. you can play it on modern TVs and stuff. Yeah, post these in the uh, post the list in the podcast thing. Yeah, I got you. It's just some tiny little uh, Wii U subreddit post. Um, they included Donkey Kong sixty four because it's like you don't need an expansion pack for it, but that's like kind of calling your peanut butter sandwich a not fast airplane. Yeah, it's not really relevant, but I mean, I guess true. Um. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, the online store from the DS is now an offline store, so you don't have to have the internet connection for that. And Animal Crossing Wild World uh, no longer has a friend requirement in Nookington. <coughs> so, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know Wild World was available on the Wii U. It is. I actually I, I, did. I had a couple, like, uh, I had like 15 bucks sitting on yeah, my it's account. Like I was like, I'll, I'll buy. So I bought Fire Emblem and Wild World. Also, a couple. Um, other things this isn't a game if you have xenoblade x uh physically not digitally then you need to go to the eShop and download there's free dlc for the game that just uploads i mean it increases the uh load time or decreases the load times makes, yeah, it yeah, makes yeah, the it game is. faster it makes it better um it is like 
10 or 15 gigabytes or something worth of data, which I know today doesn't sound like a lot, but, but on, on the Wii, Wii U, that is a lot of space. So FYI. Um, At least grab it so it's on your account so you can download it. Yeah. Whenever. Also, uh, this one depends on what kind of coll- what kind of gamer you are, but the Metroid Prime Trilogy is twenty bucks on the eShop, and a physical copy of Metroid Prime Trilogy is uh, like over a hundred dollars these days. So, just never. If you're I, in it for the sake of playing it, I own a copy of the trilogy <laughs> and the Steel Book with the slip cover. Oh, so that's yeah. So you probably got like a two hundred dollar version or something. I don't know. Uh, I picked it up at GameStop, so I assume something's missing. But back when they yeah. actually were like, someone actually commented on this, and they were like, "I'm so glad I got this at GameStop for thirty dollars a couple years ago." <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> you know, back when GameStop actually had the games in the correct boxes instead of being like, "Here's we threw out product. the correct box and put it in our own." It's like, it's like, why the only way we can make this worse is if it was made out of cardboard. Yeah, for I real. mean, it'd be pretty close. <laughs> um, and also, we got uh, the new game lineup for the new system of uh, PS3 or PlayStation Plus. So, right, not super all condensed. Of the... Yeah, it's not everything, but super condensed. There's three tiers: there's essential, extra, and premium. If you don't do anything, you get put in the essential tier, which is like the base tier. Uh, essential still the same price as what it is now. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So you still will get the monthly games like we do now. Um and online and cloud save. You'll, yeah. Um and you'll also get some new PS4 or not new but extra PS4 and PS5 games available. Um <clears throat> it's a very long list but it's basically a, a big condensed version of a lot of heavy hitters like Bloodborne's on here, Days Gone, Demon Souls for PS5, that's big, Destruction All Stars, uh Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, God of War, a lot of stuff that's already there. Gravity Rush one and two, uh Spider Man and Spider Man Miles Morales. Some of these games are PS4 versions, some are PS5. If you want more detail I recommend go looking at the PlayStation post of it. Um I'm kinda surprised how much of this list I actually own. Like it's, yeah, I know, right? A lot. <laughs> this um, list: Last of Us Remastered, Until Dawn, Uncharted, the Collection, and Uncharted Four, and Uncharted: The Lost Legacy, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Celeste, Batman: Arkham Knight, Far Cry Three, Far Cry Four, blah blah blah. It's uh, it's a lot of really good stuff. Um, and then, oh, I'm I'm wrong. So. So that was actually for the extra and premium tiers. That is not a essential tier thing. So yeah. it's at, yeah. So, so essential the $90 is only, and the yeah. 120. Yeah. So essential is just like the, what you currently have as a member of PlayStation plus. Um, so yeah, you'll, if you have the extra, the premium tiers, you'll get access to a lot more PS4 and PS5 games. Um, if you have the premium tier, so the top tier, you also get access to some original PlayStation games, some PSP games, um, and some remasters of PlayStation and PSP games that are on the PS4. The the PSP one surprised me. I didn't think that was in the initial announcement. They were like, you'll get PS1 games, PS2, and 3 will be uh, online or uh, cloud versions like you can get now if you have now yeah uh and then also you'll get access to the ps3 games via streaming like you like you do with ps now um i gotta be honest the playstation and psp games are super weak out of the gate there's yeah uh, there's less there's like 10 total we'll go so ape escape hot shots golf iq intelligent cube Jumping Flash and Siphon Filter for the original PlayStation. And then Super Stardust Portable for the PSP. That's all PlayStation games. And then also a few third-party games. Mr. Driller, Tekken 2, Worms World Party, and Worms Armageddon, all for the original PlayStation. Worms. That is it. I'm going to be honest. When they hyped this up, I thought 
like at the very least, I know it's not great, but the NES and SNES for Nintendo, they started out with like a Bankers. lot of the biggest hitters. <laughs> yeah, of I was those say, two. This, <laughs> this is like the what opposite. Nintendo's doing <laughs> now with NES yeah. and SNES Online, but at the yeah. start. Like here's yeah, it's like Blunky and this, Bamboozled. We this don't is want not worth to sell that. sixty more dollars on top of the regular. Like I'm hoping they release a better list in the next two, three weeks before Something. the service comes out. Yeah. That if is this is what is on there at launch though, uh it's not worth another Yeah, like okay, Ape Escape is cool, Tekken Two's cool. But you can get a copy of Tekken a, 2 that includes the better stuff that only exists in some versions. Like, Tekken 2's crazy with what's in what version. Yeah. Because there's too many versions. There is they... some remastered games that you get for here that are like like Ape Escape 2, the PS4 version of that, and like Jack 2, Jack 3, Jack Man. X. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Actually, I was didn't expecting they have like... like Shell money and see like the biggest titles. Yeah, of like those. Uh, come on, man, hit me with some. I I know it's gonna be rough because we're dealing. We're talking Square Enix and Capcom here, but talk. Give me some Final Fantasy. That's where give we're me some missing. Resident Evil. Give me some Metal Gear Solid. Give me some. Give me. I mean, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Literally, for God's sake. Literally, <laughs> come on. That is like a recognizable name. This is the problem. Crash Crash Bandicoot? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hello? PlayStation? Talk to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Your CEO is too busy making comments about abortion rights. That's right. Excuse me. I don't know where that came from. Uh, <coughs> so, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty mid. A lot of things mid in this opening section, to be honest. Yeah, this should be a banger thing, and it's like... What are you including, man? Where's all the... <laughs> Did y'all see that video? I posted it, I think, in the the video game memes channel with that had, like, the video of Mega64 making fun of the Nintendo Direct Classic Games announcements. <laughs> no, I think I you, missed that. You I, definitely... I don't think I get to watch it. But I definitely, like, saw you post about it. Here, I'm gonna add you guys to it. We can I'll, we can watch it after the show. It's so funny. It plays right into that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, uh, I think that's gonna wrap up our mid opening section and go right into collector's corner. This is the weekly segment where we go around and talk about games we've been playing and buying and pretty much everything else under the sun at this point. Um, Cameron, kick us off here. Okay, so. I since I've started packing, I've um, kind of not been playing games as much this week. Um, but I have been playing a lot of Yoshi's Crafted World. Um, I've played it. I think I might have mentioned that I played it on the way uh, back to Orlando uh, when I uh, last week, and I've been playing it uh, when I need to. There's a lot of content in that game, and like half of it is backtracking. <laughs> I, I was I was waiting for you to make that comment. I remember you saying something. About yeah, that if you just do a run where you beat the game and get the initial ending, it's a pretty shortish uh, game. Like if you want, because for like the base stuff, there's only like twenty songs in the entire game. Um, there's. And there's a decent amount of levels, but it's Yoshi. You know, yeah, how different can they get? Like, there's a tier list. It's Yo, it's Kirby, Z, <laughs> Yoshi, Mario, and then Donkey Kong. It's typically, I think oh, Mario yeah. could beat it on hardness if you start including special. But like, if you're playing the general story, then Donkey Kong's gonna be Donkey oh, yeah, Kong. Donkey Kong's where you want the ball buster. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, there's, like, Yoshi, Yoshi's not hard to beat. It is hard to complete, though. Um, like, I've also, uh, while I was on the plane, I went through and got uh, 100 points on all of the um, Yoshi's Island on SNES Online. 
so that I could have World 1 secret levels. And honestly, Yoshi's Island has gotten a lot easier just because it... And this is kind of like for games in general because it maintains like those you know collectibles you've already obtained instead huh? of resetting it you can also cheat <clears throat> it's on snes online safe or no well, it has it the frame back one right so you know right? uh i think like, only that's NES only for yoshi has the rewind no 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 snes definitely SNES, does SNES ha- Okay, I must be stupid. I remember looking at that. So does uh, no. Genesis. Um, the only one that doesn't have it is 64. N64 doesn't. Okay. I think it's just because yeah. they didn't want to implement it. They could have. Um, could you imagine how that would lag, though? Yeah, it would be bad. <laughs> I'm on the slide. I'm Mario. All right, I got oh, the back people it up. Pass me? Back it up. Back it up. It's like possible, but the Switch might catch on fire while doing <laughs> That is that is really sad for the Switch's <laughs> hardware state. Like, hmm, I don't know if the Switch can reverse in sixty four games. <laughs> I mean, I don't think most things could reverse in sixty four like games in, though. Cause I'm, it's... I'm pretty sure it's not that hard to do. It's just like I don't know, like mm... keeping because it's part of it's just keeping your previous actions stored in uh recent memory. Yeah, I guess so... RAM would fill up a lot quicker. But even then, I mean, like, we're talking, like, the biggest an N64 game ever was was 64 megabytes. And that's the entire game. So I don't think it would be that... I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on at Nintendo, but... Keep, keeping track of it would be bigger than 64 megabytes. I, I stopped trusting what they say in terms of development difficulty when they said they couldn't put GBA games on the 3DS because it was... I could, hardware impossible. Even though they literally did it, literally did, <laughs> wasn't it? It was literally. I thought it wasn't. Master. They didn't say. Th- I thought it was that it wasn't. They weren't happy with how it ran. Not no, that it but they That's already different... put the games on there. They already yeah, right like, for ambassadors. All the ambassadors. Stuff yeah, is and there. then That's the, the new worst. 3ds got it. The new 3ds got SNES. If you're telling me that you. The the maker of this hardware couldn't make it run SNES games. Like I'm not expecting the world here, but SNES games, bro. SNES games. I'm gonna say you know, it again. the new 3DS SNES games <laughs> makes me laugh. I want one because I don't have one. But like, I mean, mine's a new 3DS. They uh, yeah, yeah it but it's yours. That's true. It is very. Um, <clears throat> we have all the collectors. There's stuff, three. Right? new 3ds games like i think that's the extent of it i mean you i don't think you would buy a new 3ds for the games you'd buy it because you get this the that c stick which if nothing else is really awesome at majora's mask but also a lot of other games it's really useful also the eye tracking 3d makes 3d so much better than on the original 3ds i uh i mean i want one but the cost is Way yeah, well, you, yeah, you missed that boat. Before, it, 3DSs yeah. are already. I spiking. tried to score the uh, 2DS that Nintendo was selling refurbished, but those sold out within like minutes. Yeah, 3DS market's going crazy right now, dude. It is insane. Facts. All of the markets are really. Yeah, and everybody's gonna mod it, which makes it worse because they usually right. break it. Yeah, I mean, recently That's... it seems like unless you're doing physical mods, it's they've got it down to such a science like i i modded my uh super nintendo 3ds that one right there uh, it took me like 45 minutes there's a complete guide on how to do it you just like buy a you literally buy a game from the eShop. uh that's like a super cheap one that's like four dollars and then you could just put a bunch of files on an sd card and shove it in your uh 3ds and it'll think it's the game file and boot up straight into modding it and it's so easy just like that also they've gotten really responsible about making ways to back up your 3ds entirely before you do it so that in case if you do screw it up you can just default back to the original state but i mean i'm just thinking about the fact that Haley tried to buy a 3ds like two years ago and it was broke because some the guy tried to mod it like it even well, gave yeah but he's error probably message. an idiot yeah, and to be fair, I probably wouldn't have modded my 3DS if I didn't have two of them. 
like I've got the original 3DS and then I've got the big one. So I was like, well, I'll mod the big one and make that the like cool like power user one. And then I've still got the original one if I want to like experience the raw 3DS yeah. feel. Dude, um, I will say I would like I would probably mod maybe not my Fire Emblem one, but I would like to mod a 3DS to do uh capture card because I know like all the people that were doing like the physical capture card uh stopped yep because you know it was breaking systems and well now the they just don't have, like you can't get the parts anymore to do it yeah they just don't make those parts anymore oh. <clears throat> but i know there were people working on a way to like record it just with software and i don't know what happened to them no idea i remember several years ago back when the 3ds was like the cheapest it ever got and you could buy a 2DS for like 40 bucks, like the brick 2DS. Yeah. A lot of people were buying that and modding it. It's like, well, this way I can play modded stuff if I want to. And, and also if I brick it, it's $40. And it's like the 2DS that nobody wants anyway. So yeah, that's what I saw a lot of people doing. Um, yeah, the doorstop. Yeah. Oh, dude, a $40 doorstop. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> uh. I, I really wanted one of those brick 2DSs for, for the collection, but uh, that ship's going to Yeah, I want the stupid so. ones. Yeah. The 2DS that looks like a doorstop, the Game the Boy Game Micro Boy. that <clears throat> literally didn't sell because they sold it after the DS started selling. Yeah, well, it was 100 bucks when the DS was $150 that could play DS and GBA games, and you could get a Our GBA SP for one. way cheaper than 100 bucks. so it was... Well, it was like when Nintendo started trying to do their Apple. When it was like when they're at that Apple phase for a while, they just like wanted to make stuff that was like clean presentation and like modern and small and hip and stuff. Like, <laughs> they dropped that idea so yeah. quickly. Yeah, when they started losing money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a brilliant reason to stop selling. Yeah, Jules. Uh, Jules' brother has one too. I, uh, he showed me the last time I, I saw him. That was the first time I ever saw one in person. Man, that thing is tiny. Right, yeah. yeah. So small. It's like as big as the cartridge, right? It's been years since I've seen Yeah, like the, like the screen is the same size as a cartridge. Yeah. It's like it has room for the cartridge. That's it. We're good, <laughs> everybody. Yeah. All right. Uh, Alex, you go ahead. Okay. Let's see. What did I play this week? I didn't beat anything so sad. Oh, but man. I, uh... Oh, man. I totally forgot we asked you to do that. Yeah, I beat, uh, or I played a little of RE2, but I'm really having trouble with the Sherry section. I just can't get over it. The Sherry section? The little girl? You've got a player, and she has no weapons. In Resident Evil 2. Yeah, the remake. Look, did yeah. you play Claire's side? No, I didn't. That's why I don't know about it. I still haven't gotten any... I, I played, like, the first... Hour Leon has hour. that section where you play as Ada. Claire has a section where you play as Sherry. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I but it's like the scariest part of the game because <laughs> at least with Ada you had bullets. Yeah. Well, if you can't handle that, then you better strap in whenever you go back to RE8. <laughs> They're gonna take my gun. <laughs> out. No, I they, don't no, like. They, with... No, they don't take your gun. Oh well. Then I'm okay. I just need my weapon. <laughs> I can't say that it helps a lot to have a weapon, but the hero is only as good as a weapon. No, yeah. I just need to unload that <laughs> round of ammo, uh, and then you know, freak out <laughs> because they didn't go down. Uh, nice. Hmm. Uh, I played, let's see, a little Mario Kart. Classic. Um, yeah. You've got to. Also, where's the next one? We're about two months out. It's oh, yeah. Time. Yeah, we are about two months. Uh, they'll do it, like, the last day. Oh, the last day, you're, like, you're right. Last day, 11 p.m. All right, here you go. Yeah, well, hopefully, too, though, I want some new Mario month? Kart. No, but it's about no. what it should be because they're like uh, in order to yeah, actually we're it doing was like every a... two to three months, and if you start slipping now, then the next year is going to be hell because you'll have to release things a lot more frequently. So, 
and I'm basing it more on Smash, and Smash was about every two to three months. Look, they did the first one, and they've got a year to do a little more than a year. They said till December, so I guess they could wait a little. But they've got six to do. So they kind of need to pace them better. Yeah. Um. Hopefully we won't have to wait till December. That'd be sad. Like December 2023, <laughs> the last one. Yeah, that would be sad. Um. I looked into buying a bunch of things that I don't need to buy, but I looked into it anyway to be like, what would that run me? I made myself not buy it, but I got close. Just tons of video games. Yeah, yeah, um, we all do that. What? Huh? I remember looking at eBay for uh, GameCube games, I think, just because. There's those few slots in my collection I don't have certain ones and it drives me crazy mario party 5 mario party 4 and 5 yeah mario party They're not what's the what's the status of gamecube pricing i haven't looked at gamecube games Bad. in a hot while sad it makes me cry don't look at it don't look at it you <laughs> we have warned you save um, yourself grant let's see I mean, I don't really. There's not a whole lot much I want for my GameCube collection at this point. Besides, like, nah, yours is pretty complete, but you're still missing. I'm missing that Mario Party were... Four and Mario Party Four is such a stupidly rare game. Dude, four, I'm that. missing Four and Six, and I'm that's like the only like games that I'm quote missing. Everything else that I would want at this point is just kind of like, ooh, Extra. that's really rare. I would like that. Dude, pacing. I don't really want rare. I want to actually obtain the... that. Very sad. I want Nintendo's best, and Nintendo's best includes those two Mario Party games. Um, I played a little bit of Lego Star Wars, and I'm trying to convince myself that all I have to do is beat the story. I don't need to spend, you know, a hundred hours collecting a, over a thousand Kyber bricks more than that was in lego dimensions hmm. no i don't need to it's very hard to convince myself i don't need to do it i'm just like but i know it's not hard it's just tedious yeah which is kind of more annoying <laughs> than it being hard honestly yeah facts cuz like a difficult thing like say uh Sephiroth it, fighting Champ Kingdom Hearts 1. Sephiroth, uh, Champions Road and uh, Mario. Like, uh, the... Uh, you're, talk or you're talking about Super Galaxy, Galaxy 2, yeah. No, I'm talking about both. Like, like, difficult things in games where it's like, everything else is easy. Fine. Like, that... Like, that's fine. When it's just tedious for the sake of extending your playtime like uh, <clears throat> Yoshi's Crafter World um, yeah. Metopia um, it's just like like it's cause uh, like I was playing it I'm like I don't remember skipping like all these poochie pups or not complete it's because you know you play so much of it to 100% and then it's like you just burn out yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, like, I meant to bring that up earlier, actually, when you were talking about Crafted World. A similar thing. I was playing some uh, Captain Toad last night, and I looked back, like, why didn't I complete these levels? Like, I was, like, 100%ing. I 100 percent like, the first eight or whatever, and then I started looking, like, why didn't I do these? It's like, oh, yeah, that's just stupid. Some of them are fun. Like, that's like, okay, so you beat the thing, but now try to do it using, like only shoot the only shoot this cannon one time like you only have yeah. to shoot it enough to get access to the star but you don't kill any enemies so like you make it harder to navigate like i get that it's a challenge but some it's like oh you didn't find the secret one up mushroom from the toad in the corner because there's nothing up. i could just have to go walk into the corner like i get mm -hmm. you know it's it's easy to do some stuff like that if you're 
attentive, but that means having to comb through every single level, and it's just so slow because the pace of that game is slow. So like, yeah, because it, you it, can't Tabs and Toads, one of those games that I'm so glad on the Switch, they were like, here's two player, baby, and two player is so much better. Yeah. So like playing that, just like what? Yeah. Some I mean, some of them make sense, and others are just like you're just extending the playtime here. Like, why do I have yeah. to do this? Like, there's a reason the Captain Toad on the channel is two player. It's because that game takes a lot of effort if you're just yeah, playing it, it um, yeah. outright. A good, um, there's a good number of Nintendo games that have have that problem, where like some challenges are like, okay, I get that. It's for the challenge. You want me to do the level again, but now in a harder mm -hmm. fashion. And there's some Which that's is like, fine. you didn't find the secret sign. Oh. Uh. And it's not any harder to get to it. It's just hard to see the first time. <laughs> you just didn't go left instead of, you went right yeah, instead of going left. Yeah, you didn't go left into it's the like, place that doesn't go anywhere well, but has the secret sign. You you went left and so, and that was where a cutscene was that cut you off from this area. <laughs> that was the one thing i will I phrase that odyssey shit. like crazy it's like it doesn't matter what stupid thing you do here's the moon yeah <laughs> now now that 100 makes collecting odysseys yeah all of the moon 100 percenting odyssey is a pain but like the well, fact see, that, that i'm fine with like if you want to spend the time doing that you're fine but it doesn't it, like i don't know like the real problem is that when you complete a level in these games they're like Oh, I, oh, but you, you, I, you completed the level, but you suck because you didn't do all the stupid. Yeah, like, oh man, look do. at that. Like, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy does that too, and you beat a level. They're like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, you yeah, beat yeah. the level, bro. but you missed one, two, no, three, four. No, Crash like, Bandicoot yeah. will actually tell you straight up, man, you, you suck. suck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Uncharted 4 makes you play for a little bit. It makes you play the first level of Crash Bandicoot. It proves why I've never played a Crash Bandicoot game. I was so bad at it. But the whole time you're playing it, it's got comments from uh, Nate and Elena. Because yeah. technically, you're playing him playing it. Which is kind of whack. No, it's kind of cool. No, I mean, if cool. you're good at the game, if you're good, I'm not good at Crash Bandicoot. Crash I don't Bandicoot like games yeah. where you run towards the screen. Oh, you fell in that pit. Yeah, because I didn't how was see I it supposed there. to know? You suck because you fell in yeah, the thing that it's, you can't see. It's it's uh easy to like not forgive the game as a remake because today we expect it to be better. Like if you play it on the PS1, it's annoying, but like you forgive it because like well, it's 32-bit hardware, it's kind of the best they could do. It's whatever, it's fine. For what like in the time, but now like they're playing the remake exposes that happens with a lot of remakes like like oh this wasn't good <laughs> yeah no yeah. um what's it uh lego dimensions was it lego dimensions or lego harry potter um one of them well you gotta say had... what you're talking about first <laughs> I... okay so yeah. one of them i don't remember which one has you dry it like it's it's a harry potter level uh you're in the forbidden forest driving towards the screen Oh, to escape to Aragog. Then that's got to be Lego Harry Potter. Harry Potter, yeah. Because there, there weren't levels in Harry Potter where they could barely get... There were levels it. and dimensions, but it was like, here's the story of why all the characters are meeting, and then some characters had story packs that no. were just like... Harry Potter fun. wasn't one of... Harry Potter wasn't Harry one Potter of Harry Potter didn't have a no, story pack barely... because it had a Lego game. It has two Lego games. Also, they barely managed to get the licensing rights for that. They literally pulled clips like from what the movie. they own it. They, uh, do oh, you know they did the pull. Lines? They they pulled. They from were the really movie. lazy with the voice lines. Though. Like, <laughs> like, like you can hear the like background effects of the scene from the movie, and it's like, like oof. it doesn't even sound like they recorded it. Like, like pulled it from you know putting it in a movie editor it sounds like they recorded it from like an iphone yeah like they downloaded a pirated version of the movie it's and then weird it though the because mp4 it's, to mp3 conversion it's VLC. only for her <laughs> it's only, only for like harry, harry and Voldemort. Voldemort. hermione's voice lines are like a unique voice person voicing them 
and so are the Fantastic Beast characters. But Harry and Voldemort are the two that stand out from the entire cast where it's like this is fine. This this is just from the movie. Yeah. Like do one or the other. You're making it inconsistent is what really makes it stand out and get annoying. Mm. Yeah. Um Okay, so me, what did I play this week? Uh I tr- finally tried out season the new season of Apex and Newcastle is awesome. Just already making a really good case for my new favorite character. Oh, I heard uh, awful and then you said no, new no, case he's, for me. No, he's awesome. He's awesome. Uh Okay. The and he actually won one of like the four games I played the other night uh, with, with my buddies. Yeah, we uh, were like in a really open position and we're about to get pinched by two squads. But I was able to use my like ability to revive and pull back at the same time. So one of my guys got down. I went over and started reviving him and I pulled him into the Gibby shield that my other guy had put down. So it was like a real tag team combo. Also, his ability that lets him, like, fly into the air and then pound down a shield to fight behind is useful in and of itself. But also, you can target down teammates and dead teammates, like, to get their banners. And you can jump, like, up to 200 meters sometimes to, like, fly way across to go. And, like, you'll land and it put a shield down right on It kind of sounds like he's box. OP. It's, I mean, like, the problem is, like, he's all defensive like there's not a lot of offensive stuff and it's it's not very long-term defense it's just quick enough to get the hell out of there but unless you have like another defensive character that's like I, having that gibby shield is really awesome because you can pull people into the shield and stuff like that but yeah i mean also my my like uh selection of games i played with him is like five or six so you know but but what I have played, it's super fun. Also, having the Spitfire back is awesome. Um, nice. So, yeah, I tried that. Uh, playing more Wii U stuff. I got uh, got a copy of Tokyo Mirage Sessions. I got a copy of Hyrule yeah. Warriors. Got a copy of Breath of the Wild. Um, mostly just because I know that the, the end is nigh for collecting Wii U stuff. Uh, I ordered Wii Sports Club, but it isn't here yet, etc. You might want to check. Um, I know Hyrule Warriors had DLC on the it, eShop. Yeah, I I probably need to read down. I mean, like, I don't really care about if I get the DLC on the Wii or not. I, I'll definitely download it if if it's free. But I I've got Tokyo the def- Mirages might have been. Um, I've got um the, the definitive, definitive edition. edition so, like, if I really care, then I'll go play that. But I just you know, it's like same reason for Breath of the Wild. Like, if I end up beating that game again, it's just gonna be because it's Breath of the Wild, not because like, oh, it's so different on the Wii U. It's yeah. just like Breath of the Wild is a ten out of ten game. So if I beat it again, that's why. No, um, realistically though, I'm so disappointed they didn't give the Wii U the gamepad support that it should have had. Yeah, actually, I wanted, oh, to, I wanted to bring this up. Okay. So I've had a fun time talking to – we got this new contractor in at work. He's not on my team or anything, but we went last Friday. Oh, yeah, I went to see Doctor Strange, the new one. Uh, I think We saw that while I was back home. I think Doctor Strange has tied Iron Man for my favorite Marvel series. Two very Fair. different heroes, but both play to things I really like. Like, Marvel Man is all just like – Tony Stark is a huge douche nozzle that doesn't give a shit. It's going to blow up everything which is awesome. And then Doctor Strange is like so psychotic. Like it's all mental stuff. I really find that kind of thing fascinating. Gonna be honest, it has one of my favorite fights in the series. Which one? The the one with um uh the one I'm with trying to do it without spoiling. Oh, is it, in the, well, is it in the new one? Yeah, yeah, it is. So the one with Evil Strange uh towards the climax. See, that's not a spoiler cuz you that's kind of what the trailer showed. So okay, yeah, yeah. I do that. That whole concept, everything they they go into with like the 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 like they expand on the multiverse of Marvel and like all the stuff that gets involved in that and the emotional torment and like psychological horror that they expose in that game. Oh my god. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? The dog is distracting me for that long. Whoops. You were talking about what you bought, I think. Um, oh no, we we're talking about Doctor Strange, right? Uh, yeah, Strange. the the like the emotional torment that they show off in that movie, like all that mental stuff that they go through, and all like it's so like heart wrenching and like just horror, like real horror. Like 
most people when they think of horror they think of like jump scares or like you know scary gore kind of things but like that actual emotional terror is real in that movie uh and Mm -hmm. i love it i'm so there for that but you could 100 percent see like actual horror movie tropes in that movie as well yeah that's what i'm saying like like it's there's still like some horror stuff there but they play to like stuff that a lot of horror games don't play or horror movies don't play into like the psychological side of things uh i mean it always works well every time a game does it they're like applauded as long as they do it decently like it's yeah it's so games just usually see the psychological horror done more than movies and shows but i think it's also an audience yeah, I mean, I guess like as a superhero movie, you can only go so far before you start making your kids go to therapy. So, nice. can only go so far there. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so yeah, also I um, so I went to see Doctor Strange with some coworkers, and we brought this new contractor guy along uh, to kind of like make him feel comfortable and get let him know get to know everybody. And uh, he's a gamer, and. He, I've been making a lot of Wii U jokes at the office. Like so, now my the note that I the sticky note I put on my lunch in the fridge says, "You must own a Wii U to eat this," because I know I'm the only one. <laughs> okay. So I just make like subtle like nobody gets it. It's just for me to have a laugh. And uh, he saw that, and I came and talked, and I like we talked about the Wii U for a bit, and I was like, I've never talk to someone who had an interest in the wii u that didn't own one because you either like owned one and loved every bit of it or you just totally did ignored it entirely yeah uh, and he there wasn't the a reverse. middle ground yeah no, there was no middle ground uh and he was like yeah it's uh, so weird talking to somebody that knows about the wii u and had an interest in it and is like collecting for it like it was so funny to talk to him about that anyway it's weird he's like the one percent yeah where it's like yeah. I was like, I gotta be honest. This is a really weird Look, moment right the, now. The, what he is is like the interest you would see in like ten years from now yeah. towards it more, like the virtual boy interest now. Yeah, and he remembered like the whole confusion where people thought the Wii U was just the gamepad and stuff. Like he remembered all that and like just ignoring it. Like he didn't have any interest in it and stuff. So it was really weird to have that conversation. Anyway. Um, <laughs> It's weird to hear about someone at the, this point in time say, I'm interested in it, but I didn't have one. And it's like, what? Yeah, like, man, like, we're going to be those people in 20 years that are like, I bought one of those things. I, I own, own, own it. I, yeah, we're going to be like today's version of like people who owned an Atari Lynx or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's kind of why I want the 8 gigabyte. It's awful but i want one because yeah just like that's the like man not only did you buy a Wii U, you bought the bad it. one yeah and i they only own that one and i'm like give it to me i want it it's so bad i want it though yeah i want i'm jealous because japan had a white one that was also a 32 gig yeah nothing else i just like to have a white game pad Yes, that would be the cool part. I want oh, the okay, three let's game just, pads. Let's just become Scott and buy three more Wii U's. <laughs> Look, <laughs> this the is my UK Wii U. <laughs> this it is my primary been... Wii U, and these are my Wii U's in case I put lasagna on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay, good stuff. Like, <sighs> all right, uh, and I think. Oh, I played a little more uh, uh, Harvest. Oh, yeah, I got a uh, in-box white DS Lite. I think I talked about this last week. I might have. Yeah. Yeah, that's but really you didn't cool. Show been... it. Uh, well, currently it's not here, and I'll explain that later. No, you it, but... you talked about it at Phasmophobia, which is what we played. Not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I got an in-box white DS Lite with matching serial numbers and everything. It's so nice to experience a fresh DS unboxing. I never did that as a kid because my DS was used from Hastings. Uh, I so have, do I have mine? I feel like I still have my box. Um, so I've never experienced you a DS do. unboxing, but yeah. like getting to read through like all the manual and promotional stuff that comes with it, and like just feeling a fresh DS light that has barely ever been touched, and just like the buttons are so crisp and the hinge is incredible. The screen doesn't have any scratches. It's Basically, just, my uh, second one. I have uh, my Mario one, which this uh, hinge is broke. 
And then because I was at the time the 3DS hadn't come out, so I, I got a regular one, which is black and red. It's got the fl- glossy glossy Yeah, it's the one I had as a kid. Yeah, that's my second one, and all the buttons are still like fresh and new because it wasn't too long before the 3ds yeah but so you didn't use enough. it that much yeah yeah it really just the hinge like open it up and just that solid click oh it's, it was so satisfying anyway um so yeah i've been playing that um we are going real long today alex was worried that this was going to be a short episode uh so we're going to go ahead and move into the tidbits we got anything for uh Faye? cameron did a uh, collector's corner right yeah yeah I did collector's corner. okay just making sure. <laughs> yeah, because that's what led us into our first of three or five tangents about Yoshi's okay. Captain World. Uh, so they showed off the silhouettes for the bridal banner, like the two characters they do to hype it up. And that's about all. Like, there's events and stuff going on, like tap battles back, but nothing, like, actually interesting enough. Man, we really need Cooper in here. He's the only one that ever adds that adds flair to that section. Uh, uh, Final Fantasy 15 sales reached 10 million units worldwide. That is awesome. That's um, pretty good. Good to see. That I'm one really of those, and so Final is Fantasy Cameron. Being announced. I'm not. Cameron owns the collector's edition and owns less than I do. <laughs> um. A free demo of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is now available on the Switch eShop. If you have not played that game yet, seriously do it. If for no other reason than to play Bowser's Fury, it's a really look, unique experience, and you will. It's look. Do you it's want a me 3D to Mario hype... game? It's a 3D Mario. Do you game. want me to hype up 3D World? I freaking love 3D World. I think it's one of the best 3D Mario games in the series, just because. Even though it's just, um, it's not as, or yeah, it's level based. But I feel like they did slightly better. And the Switch version's like, they increased the speed, so you're so much faster than the Yeah, the, the Switch version one. just has so many quality of life improvements over the original. Um, but you know, And I you can play it with people, which is what makes it really fun. Yeah. Um, if for some reason you don't have that much of an interest in 3D World, I highly recommend at least trying out Bowser's Fury. It's a really unique experience. But, I mean, and come it's on. It's short. It's Mario 3D World. It's a 3D Mario game. If you haven't bought it yet, what's wrong with you? You should at least go try it out. Um, oh, I put this in later in the episode. Uh, so, Reggie uh, made some comments about why people th- think that Nintendo abandoned F-Zero. Uh and kind of gave a little bit of an insight on when he was there, what the situation was. So basically what he said in a TLDR is that Nintendo developers are always experimenting with different gameplay styles. And this is something we've talked about and that everybody knows. So like the sto- the main story is that F-Zero doesn't have a unique idea. They don't want to bring it back until they have a unique idea. And <laughs> at least when Reggie was there, they were always thinking about where unique experiences could be applied, whether to something that already exists or making a new franchise or something. Um, And he said that, quote, his bet is that somewhere in the Kyoto Development Center, some developer is playing around with an idea that might be applied to F-Zero. It's never a situation, at least in my experience, where the company makes a conscious decision to not continue supporting some franchise. Historically, it just hasn't worked that way, and it definitely didn't work that way when I was there. So... Basically, what they're saying is, like, Nintendo never stops supporting franchises explicitly. It's just sometimes they wait until they have something new they can apply to it. Well, there's two ways that a Nintendo franchise gets done at Nintendo, from what we've heard. Either there's an idea that they think will work really well within the series, or there's the other way. You have a director like Miyamoto or Sakurai or someone like that who's influential enough in the company to push the game idea. Yeah, they and and also for upfront series, they're going to be a lot more willing to try new stuff because so many things have already been done in Mario and Zelda that That's true. They pretty much require new ideas, but so many people I mean, working on it and the power of somebody like us like a Sakurai or something to like if they're confident in the idea, then Nintendo's gonna be a lot more willing to be like, Okay, let's go with that than just some developers coming up with a thing. Um, Plus, we're seeing for the first time in a long time with the Switch, they're 
like the old developers have shown up with like ideas again. So we're seeing franchises that we haven't seen in 10, 15 years. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the first time that Nintendo has ever consolidated their platform mm. since the NES. They aren't making... Yeah, this is the first time since 1989 that they haven't had multiple platforms to support. So they can put their entire development focus on this team and therefore they can do a lot more with franchises that don't get a lot of love because they have the bandwidth to support that. Right, they aren't really trying awesome. to be like, well, we need a Mario on this one, we need a Zelda on this one, and we need a Mario Kart also on this. For yeah. both series, it's like, we need one. And not only that, but given that the Switch has so many Wii U ports, they were able to get a lot of that basic stuff out of the way. They didn't have to come up with True. something new. They just ported stuff, so then they could like way way quicker jump into the funky stuff which is what yeah. everybody wants new funky mode <laughs> yeah, yeah new funky everything mode. though new funky i would mode. like to see new ones yeah what about retro has been weird where we don't know what they were working on after tropical freeze <laughs> and before they got put on oh, no it's coming. prime four <laughs> yeah um i don't know i I Maybe it was nothing, the, I, I wish the new idea could simply be a new F-Zero. Yes. H, how about F-Zero HD? Let's get some fresh graphic. Let's just get a new one in there. Like, we haven't had an HD F-Zero. Okay, hear me out. I get their logic, but I think about now is when they could be, like, follow Famicom and see, like, are people still interested enough in the series for us to try right. to figure out right. something that would... I... Yeah. So honestly, like, do GX in HD, or like they could. I th honestly think they could have pulled off something with Labo, had Labo actually done. I think they, they considered it to. because they did the. Um, I other actually racing. do think that they've been considering stuff for F Zero because it got put in Nintendo Land. Yeah, I mean, like that's uh, true. Know, it's. It's just pain. I just think that I think it's falling like Dread did, where they keep considering stuff and they're like, "This won't work," so they just toss out the idea. Yeah, but then eventually they'll come back and be like, "Well, maybe all we need is just a new, more of the same, but new and fresh," because it's been so long. Because like Metroid Dread definitely brought new ideas, but for the most part, it's just a new Metroid game. It also HD, cleaned up a. Yeah, well, it's just we it's got new gameplay that we expect we got, in this day and age and that kind of thing. We got lucky with Mercury Steam being like, hey, we want to do the uh, remake or a new one. And they're like, well, we'll try you out on a remake of Su of uh, Samus Returns. Yeah. And it was good enough, and it introduced enough ideas that they're like, okay, we'll, do, we'll let you do Dread, but we're going to help you refine some of these things. Like the arm attack, where in Returns you can only do it standing still, and in Dread it's like, no, you can do it. It's a lot more useful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I get, like, they always want to have some new ideas in there, but I think just a new F-Zero in 2020, like, in the 2020s, with, like, fresh top-quality graphics and gameplay that we would expect from a game today, like, it's just crisp and fun and fast, and more F Zero, like that's the new idea. Just making it HD and with with controls that match today's, you know, expectations. And the other of... thing is they're trying to figure out how do we sell it to the people who know Captain Falcon from Smash and only from Smash. Um, here's honestly... here's this super tall buff guy that drives a car that goes seven hundred miles an hour. That you in, never in see. A, yeah, in a it's... futuristic city in a race that was created by super rich people, which is something that today that everybody knows about. Like the whole the rich thing, like the top 1%, whatever. That's literally the story of the original F-Zero. That's something like, hey, like that's that's it. That's all that's you need. Now. Yeah. It's <clears throat> a modern game. Um, anyway. Like, there's ways to do it. They just haven't figured it out yet. So apparently Sony also, released Also, Mario Kart a... doesn't stop selling. True. Um, I want to see this article. PlayStation gaming terms? Sony released a list of Ooh, I got gaming a... Hold terms on. and slang. I found an article with it. Let's see. Um, 
Let's check out the full dictionary here. Wow, there's a whole lot of stuff. Right? That's so funny. Like, everything from aggro and ADS, bugs, CPU, combos, DPS, dungeons, debuffs, in No, it's, a, it's really comprehensive for the same company that went, we're going to uh, trademark um, Let's Play. Let's Play. Yeah. Yeah, wow. That is definitely something. You, it's on uh, PlayStation's blog. I highly recommend you go check it out. It's funny. They even have ganking. That's funny. Refers to any in-game death Amazing. caused by a group of assailants. That's funny. Uh, um, Fall Guys is becoming free to play and is coming to Switch. So if you haven't played Fall Guys before, you can play five games and get bored and move on. Uh, it, it's, it's fun. People spent it's just... $30 on this thing. I was not one of those. <laughs> I bought it. I bought it when it was on a sale for less than 30, but I'm probably like 15 or 20 or something. I mean, it was worth like it's fu it, it's definitely a fun game. <laughs> but it starts to get very gritty because a lot of stuff is just like a part of the game is that it the controls are a little wonky and the physics are a little off because it makes more random fun gameplay and lets people of a lower skill level still compete for the win. But it gets frustrating because at some like it stops being funny and starts being like, just let me like I put in a button and put to do this. Why did it do this instead? Not I and it just yeah. like, it just gets yeah frustrating. I don't know. It it outpriced itself and it didn't introduce enough interesting ideas. After yeah, the I mean it felt it glitch. felt like a free to play game even when I bought it because there's like a whole store with all the cosmetics and everything. Yeah, yeah, and that sort of stuff. Which, so. Which, yeah. It should have always either been free or like 15 bucks. One and well, yeah, that's one reason Among Us did well. It wasn't free, but it was only $5. And there, it's like why wouldn't you and play even it? Then, and it was free on mobile. Then, like the it DLC was free. that you could get like whoop a you get a few like it wasn't hey, pay like $10 to get that's Cameron's kind He's of dying. dead. Yeah, Cameron's dying right in front of our eyes. Yeah, uh Oh. Welcome back. The uh the Wi Fi is um breaking. Okay. I get that. Thunderstorm's coming in handy right about now, eh? Oh, I should yeah. tell you all this. Cooper was taking his final for German three, which he got uh so he did so well on. He got an A in German three. Right. So he's getting a German court next year. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't um, know about the court. I, I remember he posted some flex about it in the Discord. Right. The Wi-Fi cool. went out halfway through the test, so he had to wow. set up a hotspot. That's how you know he's good. The Wi-Fi went out and still made an A on it. Mm-hmm. Um, Minecraft Cross Angry Birds. DLC. Yeah, these are the costume things that they do yeah. on the... Everybody put away your wallet. Everybody's going to get a chance to buy it. Don't worry. I know we're all stomping at the bit for Angry Birds in Minecraft. Are they taking over, like, the toucan? <laughs> or parrot? Parrot. Or no is idea. it, like... It's a costume. costume, like, you buy on the uh, Minecraft version I don't play, because who plays the... There's just Java, and then there's there's uh, just Java. Windows. Who plays? Yeah, Windows. <laughs> oh, uh, who uh, plays Red Java? Java. It's Bedrock because Bedrock. it's consistent it across all of them. Yeah, but like I They're play Minecraft on the Java, PC. Though. No, they've already started that, but you can still play Java because they're not going to kick people off Java. It's the most, it's still more popular than Bedrock. Yeah, you play because you, look, you always play Bedrock unless you're on PC, and then you play Java. That's the rule. Even, no, now they've um, and I've done it, and it's kind of cool. If you're an old account like we all are, if you have to migrate to play Minecraft now, but if you migrate, you get a cape that's uh, red and black and gold. Ooh, uh, called nice. the Migrator Cape. Interesting. I like that. But you can like still play it. Java. This is just they want you to secure your account better. Yeah. And maybe kick you over to. 
bedrock, but they can't get rid of Java because yeah. Java is the more popular. They have a problem. Um, they have a problem. Fire it's Emblem Free problem. Hopes update. I'm gonna let one of y'all take over this since I'm not as uh, detailed. Okay. So no, hearing you pronounce the names is the best part. Of <laughs> oh, those aren't uh, bad. They're not Jap Japanese names. Is where we really get started. Japanese. Yeah, these are pretty simple. So the newest trailer showed that all the students are going to be playable, and it showed. This one was focused on uh, blue lions, right, Alex? It was. Like they haven't done. I assume because right now they like all their promotional stuff is focused on blue lions. Right. They have not be... done black eagles or uh, golden deer yet. I I assume those are going to be like similarly uh, promoted. Like, I assume one will start weeks. like this week or next week. Yeah, because they just posted about uh, Dimitri um, a few days ago, I think. So realistically, they'll be doing the other characters soon. Um, and it showed off uh, new uh, time skip outfits, right? Yes. So uh, three year for Sylvain, Felix. Annette, Ingrid, and Ash. Um, I don't like Ingrid's hair. Well, Ingrid's hair doesn't like you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, they also showed uh, Mercy, but I don't really feel like she changes much. They showed me. off all the blue lions, but we'd already seen the other three before. Mm. Okay, I can't keep up with anything. <laughs> um, oh. You go ahead. Uh, I just realized I forgot to mention something. I rode uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind last week. Oh yeah, well, the new one at Epcot? Good for yeah. you! We're yeah. not down there. I cannot wait to get a Dude. chance to ride that when I go down in October. That's going to um, be so much fun. Cameron, answer this question. Yes. Will I die if I ride it because it's like Space no. Mountain? No. Okay, so it is like it's like a modern Space Mountain. I don't. So I I saw online like a Walt Disney World news today was saying that a lot of people were feeling motion sick. No. They're like if you're getting that motion sick, that is the smoothest coaster I've ever been on. Like if you're getting motion sick on that, I don't know how you travel. So I I'm, get motion hearing, sick in the car, so I can't ride I was, it. I was going to say what I'm hearing is Alex is going to die riding that because in Space <laughs> Mountain he thought it went upside down. So <laughs> it doesn't no go upside down. It is you have so... no proof it didn't. At the time, yeah, what was I going to do? Pull up the engineering documentation <laughs> on my 2014 iPhone? Yeah. Look, uh, Mission Breakout, or no, that's the other one. Uh, Cosmic Rewind. You said, it, hold on, I don't smooth. trust your opinion, though. You're like, nobody no. can get motion sick on uh, the I didn't, Falcon no, 1, no. and no, I no, watched no, no, you no, no, all no. get off super motion sick. That's because Cooper left. was driving. Cooper was driving Smuggler's Run. Yeah, Smuggler's That'll Run. That'll do it. I, I started That'll losing it. it so I was like, I'm going to get off when they let me. Alex because, was feeling claustrophobic. Yeah, I was losing it in the line because the line were was really taking, bad. One, was taking forever. Yeah. And two. Yeah, dude. It, I, I, yeah, I remember you didn't like the lines much in Space Mountain either. That made it. That's what made it extra fun because by the time you got on the ride, you were already having a horrible time. It's yeah, standing, standing in the yeah. line. No. Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, so I dude. left that one because I'm like, I'm not doing it. And I watch them get off, and they're all super motion sick, and they all Cooper, look like they're about to throw yeah, off. Yeah, because Cooper someone was, was like, "Yeah, let's let Cooper go. Let's let Cooper be in charge." <laughs> um, no, but uh, like, even if you don't write it, I honestly do think you could handle it. Even if you don't write it, though, the queue is top tier you have to go in to see the queue i mean usually the queues are pretty good some are bad i think the um i understand why they did it but i think the uh what's the one that everybody's always trying to get on and it's got a three hour wait in star wars land oh rise of the resistance That's awesome rise of the resistance thank you i think yeah, that was not... kind of lame rise was not designed for i get it idea like, at it's, all it's like 
you're in a smuggler's base, but man, it's it is, just kind of lame. It's this, like I don't know what you're all talking about. I I I no, had a I mean, great it, time. I thought it was cool. No, sm- I'm not talking about the awesome. actual ride. Uh, yeah, I know, when but you actually like it's the... it's cool. Like I, once, I don't once know, you I guess get my bar's past, not high enough. Once you get past the turntable, it's great. Being in a cave is kind of like almost generic for Disney because there's so many rides that do it. Even the dogs think the queue is stupid. Correct. Good opinion. Good opinion. Finally, <laughs> from the dogs. Uh, all right. PlayStation Five. Console cover pre-orders are up at PlayStation Direct for uh, like fifty-five bucks, I think. Uh, yeah, they release right. June seventeenth, and will be available in star- stores starting July seventeenth. So that's yeah. exciting. I'm definitely getting the uh, the blue one to match the blue controller. That's going to be super awesome. I see the starlight blue. Yeah, that's. that's I've fine. considered one, and I'm like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I, I could. That fifty-five dollars could go to a game. That's true. Not that I'm against the midnight black one, because I know the console will look a million times better with it on. But I don't need it. Yeah, they look cool. Anyway, they're available now. If you have PlayStation Plus, you get free same uh, launch day delivery. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. Kirby 64 is coming to NSO Plus next week. This so week, next week, something like some, that. Uh, it, within the next week, it'll be yeah. here. So that's that's always good to see. Um, Crystal Shards is interesting because you don't get the real ending unless you collect all the shards. <laughs> like, you can't even fight the real boss unless you do it. So, yeah, you're forcing it 100 percent it. Yeah. And some of the puzzles are stupid. Like, you have to go out of your way to get the power because the two pieces are in different levels. Because you could combine powers in that one, which was always cool. Oh, yeah, I love that. No, a bunch of them are stupid, though. But it's just kind of funny stupid. Like, the fire and ice make a melting ice cube. It's completely useless. Except for the puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Room Factory 5 shipments and digital sales top 500,000. That's cool to see. That's good. Room I Room Factory is one of those I, things like, I like the idea. If Harvest Moon and Stardew I, Valley didn't exist, I'd probably love it. I actually had this pre-ordered, like the collector's edition, and then went, I need money for no, yeah, and... I'm going to cancel. I got very close to that launch date before I canceled it, though, but I was like, See, collectors. If edition, I was more hyped, I would do it. Or if I had more hard money, to like yeah. warrant for newer games, yeah. the games you haven't really played before. Yeah. Um, Alex's version of Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Persona series has sold 1.3 million copies worldwide from April of last year to March of this year. That is awesome. Persona's really taken off. Yeah, and during that time, uh, they had four available, I think. You could buy Royal Strikers, um, Strikers, which came out here. Not, like, there wasn't a new one in Japan. There was just newer-ish ideas here. Yeah. Because Strikers came out last year. Royal came out the uh, uh, two years before that or whatever. Persona 4 Golden became available on Steam. Right, Steam. Yeah. Um, and then you had a few others, Mission Mash from 3DS, and like the dancing ones were still are still <laughs> available to buy on PS4. Yeah, but that's pretty good. When there wasn't really the newest one was Strikers for which for Japan had been out a year, so a lot of people were like, "Well, we're not getting it." I saw so many people be like, "They won't release it." I'm like, "They've released every game for." You know, 15 years, there's only, like, one game we didn't get because the other one didn't sell, like, at all. Yeah. So they were like, no. Uh, Kingdom Heart cloud versions get, quote, busy servers warning. And this is why I hate cloud versions. We're not ready oh, for Oh, God. They only, yeah, they only had five systems set up because they didn't think more than five people were going to do this <laughs> stupid crap. I didn't buy them, but, like... I hate everything about cloud versions and 
companies are like, I love them, and I'm like, stop. Yeah. It's like, it's not good if you're not going to actually, like, give us... Well, you're based on, like, right. their Wi-Fi, but also your Wi-Fi, so it's like... Yeah, it's your connection we to the server. We don't live in Japan, is, where yeah, if I like... live across from the other side of the island, my ping is seven. Yeah, uh, this is basically a worse version of, like, online DRM. Yeah. Because yeah. now there's more things involved than just your And Wi-Fi. Microsoft is doing both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ubisoft Plus is coming to PlayStation. Say it with me. Who cares? Who cares? Oh, Cooper's not here. He yeah, yeah, I know. I, could, I, I thought about it. I was going to be like, who? But Cooper's not here. So. Um, so, yeah, I guess if you're a Ubisoft guy or girl or whatever, then rejoice. Get I, yeah. I mean... You do. Ubisoft you. You get has that every once in a while. I'm like, yeah, I'll play that. And then they've kind of gone back to, we're releasing garbage. Yeah. Cool. Assassin's Creed and Tomb Raider. We get it. Can we go back to when they were making Rayman Origins and Legends, though, and the paying a lot of money to get those music levels? Oh, yeah. When they those weren't annoying? Good. Yeah. When they were good? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Uh, Warner Brothers Multiverse has released a voice cinematic trailer. I bet that's hilarious. It has um, um, Super Saiyan Shaggy. Incredible. They announced like when they announced the game that he's their balance one. He's the one. He's like Mario is in Smash, where they balance everything to him. Interesting. Metroid. So someone restored uh, one of the original Metroid Prime trailers uh, with the like from the thirty-five millimeter film, and it's really cool looking. It's up on YouTube, uh, and it looks so good. Like, could I, you imagine how much more hype Metroid Prime would have been if they had that back in the day? If they could show like true. high quality that four K. It cuts kind of off uh, before it announces is the age rating which i thought was a little weird interesting yeah i don't know why they did that it's like rated trailer ends i'm like i mean i know the version of the... metroid prime rated yeah <laughs> we rated it i'm like we it rated. rated it i know the version with the rating exists so why <laughs> why cut it off on this one that you're like this is the best version that will ex- ever exist they should put the I mean, uh, ESRB logo on the game, but instead of putting a rating, just put rated. Rated. <laughs> this game is rated. It's rated. Rated what? It's rated. rated. We rated we, it. We rated it. Look at that rating. Look at that T-E. rating. T-E. Here you go. <laughs> it's not rated. What's, what's the rating? It's just rated. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they already have the R for when it's rating pending. Yeah. No, 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 this is just rated. Right. Yeah, R-A. R- R- yeah, rating pending and then just rated. It is no longer pending. <laughs> I love you, rated. you just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, we know it's not. rated. That's right. all there is. We don't. There is no... I, that's the rating. It's rated. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm uh. starting to make my brain hurt. Uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, translating the Skyward Sword away from motion controls for the HD re-release took like a year and a half. Which, part of me is like, yeah, that makes sense, because it's kind of weird, but some of it's also like, why? It's so intuitive. I guess that's why it takes so long. they got to figure out what makes it intuitive. Well, they wanted it to run without motion controls, because realistically, they could have just been like, excuse me, they could have been like, <laughs> here you go, suckers, here's, um, we just put it on the Joy-Cons, and they were like, no, we want people to be able to play it. I guess I also wanted it to be playable on the light, but realistically, the version they've got where you can use the control sticks more, you can play it with a real controller now. Yeah, it's both that and, like, even if it wasn't specifically for the light, you have to have a way to play it portably. Like, not everybody playing portably portably can sit there, switch down, and play with motion controls unless you're Cameron trying to play in the airport. 
hey, play Switch that Sports worked. in the airport. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> yeah, no, no. If you're playing Switch on the bus next to a pregnant lady and you're trying to swing your arms around <laughs> to do it and you punch her in the stomach, you're going to jail. <laughs> I think you'd go to jail regardless if you ended up hitting her. Like, it doesn't matter if she's pregnant. For what? Being a dork? Hitting her! No, well, I mean, yeah, hitting her. I'm just saying, like, you'd probably hit her in the stomach because that's how pregnancy works. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, if you didn't, I was just thinking, like, you'd probably go to jail even if you didn't hit her. Like, for what? Hitting her. Yeah. Open, no, like, playing motion controls in public? I get it's kind of obscene, <laughs> but. <laughs> public indecency? <laughs> public indecency? <laughs> Oh, that'd be a pretty good bit on Scott's thing, though. He can pull that off pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> Who the hell decided to play this motion control in public? You're under arrest. For what? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be a funny one. Um, all right. Our old but still interesting tidbit for the week. So, apparently in the mid-90s, Nintendo and Sega both were concerned that there was going to be a second video game crash, like what happened with Atari. Uh, because let me, I actually found a, uh, article about it. Let's see. Um, Sega has not been the only company to suffer. One large software company stated that there is not a single company that has been able to turn a profit in the European market. In the fiscal period ending in March, 1995, Konami took an extraordinary loss of 11.6 billion yen due to clearing out unsold inventory. Uh, Capcom lost 7.5 billion yen after uh, taking the value out of its American subsidi subsidiary. Um, Nintendo lost 9.8 billion yen for the same reason. And Sega lost 26 billion yen due to the downsizing of both of its subsidiaries because uh, that was during the launch of the Sega Saturn, which if you know anything about the Sega Saturn... It really it's wasn't hilarious. It was yeah. It's hilarious. That's not nice, Alex. It was the Look, Wii U it's... of the mid nineties. No, it wishes it was the <laughs> Wii U of the mid nineties. I mean, people that bought it were like, "Wow, this, like it was like really good stuff." But it was like there's just so many hardware problems, and they tried to make it something it really wasn't, and stuff. But like the, a lot of the game, like there's so many hidden gems on the Sega Saturn. True, and a lot of that's been brought off as well. Yeah, for but good reason. Still... Panzer Dragoon Saga is like, what, four hundred dollars now yeah. physically or something? Oh yeah, Sega Saturn's one. I'm like, I'm not collecting this ever. <laughs> um, Maybe if I married super rich. <laughs> Even then, oh it's yeah, like... you marry a sugar mama. That's your plan. Yeah, That's a good absolutely. Plan. Hey, Even all your sugar mamas listen to the All Night Gamers podcast because I know <laughs> you're out there. We got, oh, a, yeah. we got a hot ticket item here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. People listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, the, the Venn diagram of people that listen to this podcast and sugar mamas is just two circles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of those circles is a lot bigger than the other. <laughs> yeah, facts. Uh, apparently, so onto the rumors. Apparently, the special edition of Xenoblade Three, which is exclusive to the Nintendo Store and which we all know is going to be a pain in the ass to get if you want it, is going I think to go Cameron's up for Cameron's going to make an attempt. I'm still think thinking I'm about it. I'm thinking about it in the same way I'm thinking about the Fortnite Joy Cons. Two different reasons. Like the Fortnite Joy Cons is because. Not only do I not need Joy-Cons, but it's Fortnite. And Xenoblade 3 is like, I really just don't need this. This is a series I don't really care about. I own all the games. I even own the stupid Rare I'm... on Switch. I bet that pisses a lot of people off because I'm one of the physical owners and I don't even play the game. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Hey. I... This is the most disappointing collector's edition they've done for Xenoblade. Like, all the others are kind of cool. And this one's like, okay. You get an art book. Well, hold up. Hold up. Do not tell me that music USB that hacks your computer is cool. Yeah, you don't I mean, want an 800 megabyte USB stick with DRM in it? You're looking at me like I'm stupid. What are you talking That's like the best deal of all time. What's the problem? Right. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
We got a rumor from Nate the Hate. Let's see. Blooper Team is still working on a Silent Hill 2 remake. Multiple Silent Hill projects are currently in development. Um, Believe so, it when I see it, but yeah. also, I'm like, do I want to make an attempt at playing a Silent Hill game? Maybe, but... I absolutely do. Can you I'm actually... Pay, yeah. Can you actually fight back in a Silent Hill game? At least in Resident Evil, you get a gun. Yeah. I mean... Maybe All not. I know I about know. Silent Hill is Pyramid Head, and he's like as scary as the scariest things in Resident Evil. But you don't get a gun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't fight back if I don't have a weapon. Yeah. Um, let's see. If you do have weapons in Silent Hill, which I can't confirm or deny because I've never played one. Uh, I kind of hope they do follow up Capcom's thing where Capcom's done for the last three games. They were like, you can, if you're bad at our game, you can buy the, you have to beat the game on the ultimate difficulty to unlock the infinite weapons, and you can just have them for yeah. $5. Like, I think that's a good thing, and people complain about it, but it's like, not everyone has either the time or is like good enough to play the ultimate difficulty yeah yeah what is, village called it something special village of shadows or something something like that yeah mm -hmm. um the rumor about a game from Xbox Game Studios getting the master chief treatment master chief collection treatment excuse me has been confirmed at Gears of War ooh that's one of the ones we guessed <laughs> Yeah, ooh. <laughs> What's it going to be? Is it going to be Gears of War? Is it going to be Forza? <laughs> right? Man, this is... Uh, this is if it was easy, anything really. else between the... Besides those two, it'd be a million times cooler. It's... Yeah, I would have been like, okay, I I, I concede. It's nope. like, damn! It's one of the three they work on! <laughs> yeah, it's one of the three games they make. And one of the two that hasn't already gotten the Master Chief treatment because that's what the treatment is. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, cool. I don't know. The only Gears of War game I really care about is Gears of War 3, and that's because of the multiplayer mode. Because I played that a lot with Mr. Coolers back in the day on 360. Mm. Look, uh, they basically went, we made Rare Replay, and it didn't sell how we wanted it to sell. So we're done. <laughs> we're not. We made a CGI trailer for um, Perfect Dark 2, and our whole team has basically left yeah. the Perfect Dark 2 project. So do y'all think that's getting made? No. Don't forget Conquer on HoloLens. Oh, uh, true, 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 where they made him, like, scary as fuck. Let's Ho be honest. Yeah, horrible. It's... Yeah, like you put him in a fire. Let's be honest. It's best that didn't happen. It's best, the, it's best we just don't talk about the HoloLens. Ah, like, uh, true. It's like Microsoft's version of a Google Glass, but it's worse. Um, yeah, at least Google Glass, like, people know about. <laughs> Google Glass lasted long enough to get banned. <laughs> <laughs> Square Enix lost a reportedly $200 million on the Marvel games. Avengers will transfer to Embracer Group. That's a lot of moolah. I mean, let's be honest. This is why they lost so much. Avengers was really bad, so nobody had hype in Guardians, but Guardians is pretty good. But, I mean, you already left a bad taste in their mouth. Like, it's going to take a long time to get over that. That was... Yeah, yeah they horrible. brought Guardians. Guardians came too soon, especially since they were still selling DLC and announcing DLC for... Avengers. Uh, Avengers, they should have delayed Guardians a yeah. little longer. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Because um, it actually is pretty good. And our final rumor, we love talking about it. You'd know it so good. The Nintendo Switch Pro. Not really. So it's, well, <laughs> kind of. It's the new Nintendo console is reportedly releasing in 2024, says Analyst. Now, I can't tell you what kind of brain you have to have to come up with an idea that Nintendo might put out a console in two years that we've been talking about literally since the inception of the Switch. But someone had the had the brain to put out that thought 
uh, that we totally haven't said every time we talk about the Switch Pro. Um, but yeah, so apparently, Mister or Miss, I don't know. Uh, uh, what's what's non-binary prefixes? There I, isn't one. There isn't one. Okay, so they. Uh, mi- no, he oh, said like no, Mister no, or not Miss. Pronouns, um, like, yeah, not pronouns, but like Mister, Mrs. Uh, uh, Miss. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mr. S's, uh, peers <laughs> Mr. parting Mr. roles of Ampere Analysis who claimed that he, okay, Mr., uh, that he and his company are forecasting the device to release in 2024. I mean, yeah, probably there's going to be a Switch Pro by then. Cool guess. Wait, they're just forecasting that it, look, here's the problem with all these analysis. They're like, we looked at when Nintendo releases their consoles. I mean, yeah, but they also said, we're redefining the what it means for the life span because they want it to last longer, but also to give them an opportunity, especially. And they reconfirmed that recently because they were like, "We don't want it to be our every other generation of since the uh, the thing that started." NES. Yeah, of it Six sounds years. amazing. It sounds no, yeah. it's where it switches off. It's like great sucks. S and those the first two didn't really do it, but like since then, the N sixty four sold pretty well ish. I think GameCube did not. The I mean, Wii did. The Wii U did not. The Switch did. Yeah, but it's it says like the it just they just call it a next gen Nintendo device, but I guarantee they're talking about the Switch Pro because if you're talking about probably redefin- extending like right now we're at six years. We're we're at five years. We're, we're we're getting close to six years. So, them releasing a new device in twenty twenty four that's not a Switch Pro is not redefining the life cycle of a console. No. Also, they announced so many games they're working on that aren't. Yeah, like we still don't even know anything about Metroid Prime yet. Yeah, like there's no unless it's, it's getting moved over, which it won't. It could, but they they generally are seem to have defined that they're like, we want this to launch with a Mario game, a Zelda game, a whatever, something that people yeah. can play together. Yeah, but also, I after Breath of the Wild, I don't know if they want, like, if they weren't, like, for whatever reason, it's not the Switch Pro, and it's, like, a new console, and they'd move Metroid over there. That's like, also true. Two's coming out next year because it got delayed. They wouldn't do that in addition, if they were like, well, in 2024, we're releasing. A not if it's pro. a pro, yeah, yeah, if it's a pro, great. You can fine. release it next year and be fine. But, like, they're but, not going to release Metroid Prime 4 without, like, it releasing on a Switch. They already had some backlash with Breath of the Wild on the Wii U, and the Switch has a much larger install base. Yeah, like, why would you, th- we're, like, we're talking, so they, they talked about that um, the, by the end of 2024, the Switch is to predicted to have sold through 146 million units, which is only, like, which would be higher if it wasn't for the shortages, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, why would you, I, I think they're finally realizing, like, why would we throw away this install base? Like, they're they're basically like we've thrown away the install base enough times, but right now the console moving forward on like better graphics and stuff is kind of stagnating. Yeah, we can release a better one if we need to for power users. I mean, that's just what like people have just wanted a switch that can run things in higher fidelity. Look, I want a switch that can run uh, Age of Calamity (laughs) better. Yeah, and not make me sick. They did I think fix, that's an optimization. It is problem. running slightly better after the DLC because I did play it and I wasn't like, and I didn't feel like we're doing seven frames at best. Like yeah, I okay, was like, we're, like, we're holding at least a consistency. Yeah. On this. Okay, but like, um, Alex, you know those levels that you said, uh, in uh, Thirteen Sentinels, um, that lagged I, on PS4. Yeah, on the pro. I I asked about it um, under one of the Nintendo uh, tweets because it's on sale right now for the Switch, and people were saying that those levels 
are like better optimized for the Switch. Like the way they optimize the game for the Switch makes it. Run I can see it. Better. You have two different company styles when people bring stuff to Nintendo. Either it becomes the best optimized version of all time because it has game, to, or it becomes the or... worst version of yeah. the game. And also, I mean, and it's we... just it's easier to make the Switch do 720p 30 frames than to make the PS4 Pro do 4K. Like. It wasn't shooting for 4K. The reason the game lagged at those segments is because it's a real-time strategy, and they just spawn Everything thousands like of that, yeah. enemies at the same time because you do massive amounts of damage with the weapons massive you do. Massive particle effects. Yeah, so it's... Look, it's super fun on the PS4 Pro even then when it was lagging because you're like, did I win? <laughs> if... <laughs> You're just kind of sitting there, but it made it like kind of unique because you're like, it's so intensive that it has slowed down the game. Yeah, <laughs> because they've the spawned so many enemies. Travel system or console. Um. So yeah, look out to episode three hundred in twenty twenty four and talk about the announcement of the Switch Pro. I'm gonna vomit. Uh, <laughs> we wouldn't be at 300 at that point. I don't it's know. Okay. Whatever it would be. We might. If two, there's enough 200... special. Yeah, that's more right. Yeah, okay. okay. 150. Um, no, he said 2024. No. So. Oh, yeah, that You're would really be. Like... fact checking my obviously I, I egregious know. statement. What What are we doing Look, here? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting the fact check anime. Like when I was watching, they're like. This is how many students we bring up through K through graduation. And I was like, well, that's about 200. And you said there's like 200 applicants and you clearly don't accept everybody. So where's this? how do you deny all these people? Because it shows denying. I need answers. But then exactly. I need answers. <laughs> I want pictures of Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't remember. I I'm I I got some quote in my head I can't remember. It's like I don't want I don't want food, I want answers. <laughs> I can't remember what that what that's from. Anyway, uh so yeah, on to the finishing topic. Uh this week got a little discussion for you. Uh what video game moment has made you the most emotional? Moment, not game. I mean, it could be a video game, video game moment. What I, I, if you wanted to say a game, that's fine. But if you have a specific moment that sticks in your head, that's also like a click. Like, I don't know. Uh, I hope you don't expect me to very be very strict on discussion questions. I thought after maybe ninety-one <laughs> episodes, you would. <laughs> we would. Got no. a little relaxed. I think we're as strict as the ACT. SAT. <laughs> Answer the question now. We want you to answer. Yeah, okay. So to be fair, you can't use a calculator for this question. <laughs> uh, and I need an essay that we're going to hand out to students after you graduate yeah, so they can I need, see. Uh, I need five pages in 45 minutes. Go. <laughs> um, right. It's so mean that they give those out to students to show. Well, here's someone who sucked. Don't write it like <laughs> Um, any of you guys got something to go first? You want so, me to go first? Um, I, not, probably not the emotion you're, you were thinking, um, but fear. Um, okay. Yeah, that's a, like, that's a good point. It doesn't have to be like, like, you know, heart tear jerking. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, so I, I've brought this up on the show before that Pikmin 2 was the first game that I like outright paid for. Um, that and Sabo. Um, but with Pikmin 2, there's the Submerged Castle uh, dungeon. And when, you know, you're like, ten, like a young teenager and playing like a dark level and in the middle of the night and you just hear this unkillable enemy drop down into the level and traps you far away from access to anything it's a uh, like you know, oh 
shit. It's, it's like, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, I am dying. Um, <sighs> yeah, that's interesting. I actually didn't think about any other, um, uh, anything but like, uh, heart wrenching kind of either like sad or like, yeah, joy, like super like, joyful. Anything that makes you cry, I guess. I don't know. Like, um, in that same vein, this is 100% recency bias. Um, but in Crafted World, there's like these darker levels with enemies that, um, like they're little puppet guys with axes, and the screech they do when they see you, like it's unnerving. Mm. Um. Okay, uh, let me start with what what I originally was thinking about. So, um, there's not that many games that make me feel like oh my god, that's so wholesome, I'm gonna throw up. Uh-huh. Kind of thing. But Stardew Valley was probably the first one. I don't have... I didn't play many games that have like a heart-wrenching story growing up, even like through high school, just because I am I was an idiot. Uh, like, I just wanted stuff that I could understand. So Stardew Valley... Like, the, the whole concept of like the... From the beginning, like with your granddad dying and like that being like super real. Like... I got to do good now. That was upsetting. And like that feeling you get, it's like the same kind of feeling when, like when you go visit a grave or something, it's not necessarily sad. It's just like quiet. I don't know how to describe that. Oh, emotion. True. Like, like the res- you just feel like such an overwhelming need to respect where you are and like what you're looking at kind of thing. Um, the shrine in Stardew Valley, like of your of your granddad, especially like after year three when he talks to you and all that stuff, like, like just it's that same feeling, like you're just looking at a grave. But I I don't know, it's that was um very interesting. And then also when huh uh because you're talking about graves, it brought up the idea of funerals and like uh you know like when you're in an auditorium and you're listening to someone talk about a sad story uh so there's this idea of because there's so many people and because you're supposed to be quiet and respectful um essentially it's like an idea i've heard of kind of before and it's been explained to me but i will not be able to explain it well uh as well as i should be able to But it's like when there's so many people and you're supposed to be quiet and things like that, uh, the idea is like laughing at a funeral because you want something to break the silence. Yes, break the silence and lighten Lighten the mood a little bit. Even though it makes no sense for you to laugh at that funeral. It's it's like a more – like a straightforward version of like laughing about things that either piss you off or were super painful, like, like breaking your leg or something like obviously not in the moment because you're probably screaming that your leg's broken, but like once you're in the hospital, like it still hurts and sucks everything, but you like, you almost want to laugh at it because well, it's either I laugh at it or I get upset and cry or get angry or something. So like I might as well laugh about it. Um, my, my family does that a lot, almost to a toxic extent, really. But like, even like at my grandma's funeral, like it was really sad and we had a lot of, you know, super sad moments and bonding moments and that kind of thing, stuff that goes with the funeral. But we also like just made a lot of jokes and like laughing around and stuff. Right. Because because of that idea. Yeah. Like we might as well laugh about it because nothing's going to change what happened. And you either choose to joke about it and lighten the mood, or you just choose to, be more upset so yeah I, right. I definitely get where you're coming from there um also a lot of breath of the wild breath of the wild towards the end once you get all the memories and you see the photo of you and all the champions and zelda and like that moment there and the like the the little bit of grief you feel because you forget that you still have like you can still talk to them because they're you know they're they're ghosts now but they're still around um, like that, when you forget all that for a moment and just experience the grief of losing people that were at one time, like your core family, really like it's, that was, uh, that was a real 
jerking moment. Um, it actually it hits me every time I, I think about it. I have a uh, cool little collector's edition of Breath of the Wild. It's not a. It's like a collector's edition without the game. It was a third party thing that someone made that just has like a, a full size map of the of a, the entirety of Hyrule. And like it has a little a glass spirit orb and like a huge art book and stuff, and it also has a little photo with a quote. Actually, I'm gonna grab it real quick. I want to look at it. It is quite the meaty boy, very heavy, mostly because of the art book. Yeah, you've shown me this. I think. Don't you have it in Casita? Yeah, yeah, y'all have seen this before, huh. but. It's a it's that f it's that photo of the one memory, with all yeah. together, and it's a quote from Cass that says, "By the way, I found this when I was looking through my teacher's note. I was thinking that maybe you should be the one to keep it." And I, you know, that happens in a lot of games where they do like, "Hey, I found this," and it's a photo, and it either triggers a flashback or is like an important memo because it's at the end of the game or something. But this one really, uh, that one hit me really hard. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of fear. That ghost house that Alex is uh, holding off on and RE8. That's scary as shit. I don't want to go in. Uh, I know nothing else will be as bad if I once I uh, do it. But I like know. True fear? I gotta say, phasmophobia scares the hell out of me. And I've played. You already it. know it scares the hell out of me. <laughs> They're yeah. like, Alex, go inside. I go inside and the ghost shuts the door. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, Cameron, to, I like... wish you could have. Yeah, we we're talking about when you finally were able to get a, a PC down there one way or another, and mm -hmm. uh, you should play with us. But oh, last absolutely. time um, we were playing, we finally got Alex to join, and uh, it was like in the second one we were doing. Uh, we were second for y'all, first for me, because I had just joined. Okay, yeah. Room. So like. Uh, Dakota and Josh and I were like all mulling around the plan. Like, what's our strategy? And Alex heard one piece of what to do and was like, got it, took it, and went into the house. And he had like super low sanity because we forgot to look at that. No, I'd already had. No, I was high. I had, I had really? the highest sanity out of. Yeah. Mine was still like 80 so or something. Never mind. I guess I'm bullshitting. Anyway, he went into the house and the ghost immediately started to hunt. And Alex goes, I, like, he's. I don't usually hear him scream like that, but he went like, ah! And like, and immediately died. Well, it was so funny. Especially because I expected that closet right next to me be available. And it was full of junk. All this junk. Yeah. So it prevented me from going in. And it spawned on top of me. So I was like, <laughs> I just kind of lost. That was good. Uh, one more real quick. Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2 definitely make me feel the most badass. Because the scale gets so grand in terms of what you end up doing. Like at the start, like you're always fighting angels and demons and stuff. But like towards the end, when you start fighting things that are the size of literal cities, and you're just rolling around with freaking, you've got swords on your feet and you've got shotguns in your hands, and you do all this crazy ass stuff. And well, it's just so freaking satisfying and like badass. It's so good. It's like makes me want to go. You know, I don't know, do man things so like lift a car or something. Man, yeah, you know, just man woman. things. Lift, going out and lifting a car, <laughs> just man things. Correct. All right, what do you got, Alex? Uh, well, the first one that came to mind when you read the question was, it's the ending of the world ends with you. So, I played this in middle school or whatever when it came out. So I think about it a lot. But essentially throughout the game, you follow Neku. And Neku's a jerk emo kid. Mm -hmm. But throughout the game, he starts bonding with people and building connections and becoming a better person. So, like, you've got two speeches on opposite ends of the game. One where he's like, I hate people. And one where he's like, and at the end, he's like, thanking um, one of the characters. Okay, before the dog so rudely interrupted you. Uh, so, um, uh, emo guy hates everybody, starts building bonds. Right, and you. at the end, he goes into, like, a speech about opening yourself up to the world. I don't know. I just think do think about that scene. 
a decent amount. Um, like when similar ideas are brought up in games or whatever. But it's more because of when I played that game, I think, than... Because I think that's like one of the first real story games I played. Yeah, the the first game you beat that has a like actual moving story that's not just like, mm-hmm. haha, Mario kicked Bowser's ass, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, like it's. Um, oh, it's- I do think about Mario games, but it's mostly I don't I, like sixty four like, that much. But if I do boot it up, I do kind of smile, mm-hmm. just because of the, like while you're in the opening area at least, just because. I played it enough. I mean, yeah, I'm like I'm not yeah. dogging on Mario games. I'm just saying like their story is not the reason you play yeah, Mario no. game. Um, unless it's then, Super Mario RPG or yeah. a Thousand okay, Year that's, Door. That's not what I'm talking um, about. You know what I'm but talking no, about. Those are RPG. Um in the same vein as the world ends with you, uh Kingdom Hearts uh three fifty eight over two days. Um it's fair. Is like that one is, you know, a gripping story, emotional, like, and that was the first Game Hearts game I like I properly played. So it's, you know, like it's kind of its own piece because it you don't technically need to really know about Sora. Or I mean, you do. There's you a do, lot but of like missing links. There's a lot of missing links, but it's not like you're going to be lost like if you jumped into the Kingdom Hearts 3, you know? Um, but, like, the story behind that one, and honestly, Birth by Sleep, like, is just, like, an actually emotional piece for being an RPG on a handheld. And it's like a travesty that they won't remake the game for like a modern console. There's some game I played not too long ago and I can't remember what it is, but like somebody dies and it's not at the end. It's not like a climax ending. It's like someone dies like, like either halfway or like three quarters through it. And, uh, like it's so horrible. Cause like, damn, like now you gotta keep, like you gotta keep playing, but like, one of your main homeboys is dead. I, 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 like same kind of vibes as like JoJo gives off when when stuff like that happens throughout the series. But um, I can't remember what that game was. I mean, I can know the, name the most iconic one, but I won't. Yeah, too, but is it too new? I, like, is it spoiler? No, territory? it's twenty years old. No, they're remaking it. Shut up. Oh, it's oh, thirty years oh, old. Shut up! Yeah, everybody knows about that. I was surprised people don't, but it's more like I'm they like literally reference it in Sephiroth's uh, intro. Well, that gave it. If you if you know anything you about go. it, it, that that would have given it away. If you yeah. don't, then we're not going to say anymore. Um, Cameron, eh, it's been out Look, longer. It's, it's been thirty it's been, year old spoiler. Yeah, and like the remake, the first part is already out. Has been out for several years now. So look, that that saying that's a spoiler is like, like saying Dark Vader's Luke's father is a spoiler. I can't believe you just spoiled it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, um, you good? Trying to think. I've got to actually, uh, twi- I, I gotta say, you know, a lot of Zelda games really. I yeah, think about Majora's really Mask it. for that reason. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that one. I, really, most of them. I mean, like, like Wind Waker is, like, really like, good guys win in the end kind of vibe, and like it's super, like, just really good feeling. And then like, Twilight Princess, that whole thing comes up because I just beat that. That's why it's so fresh in my mind. Like you. Like you never think about it until the end, like the bond you built with um, Minda. Minda. Minda, thank you. Mid Midna. Mid yes. Midna. M I D N A. Yeah. And then like that whole scene at the end where she like breaks the uh, the mirror and goes away, and like you really start to realize like like damn, I was kind of falling in love with that weird creature that was. <laughs> Writing me as a wolf. I guess uh, that le- I guess that leads more in- leads more into my sexual preferences that I'm willing to discuss. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. 
Uh, don't <laughs> don't go on R thirty four and search Twilight Princess. That's what I'm saying. No. Um, but anyway, the, um, on a serious note, yeah, that one was really a lot of awaken. Link's Awakening's a lot like. Oh that. my God! Yeah, dude, I totally. That's yeah. that's got to be the top one for me because not only is the ending so moving, but it's like such so, a climax because you know the whole time. In the uh, manga version that got written. He figures it out, and he's like, I can't do it. So he stops doing the quest and just hangs out with all the people and Marin because he's like, I can't. I know what will happen. I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah, that that game, like the entire He does time eventually do it, but like... Yeah, he eventually like, realizes I... that that's not an option. Like, he can't live in his mind forever. But, yeah, that's... That whole game was... a. A horrible experience like it was a great experience but it was so horrible to play it because the whole time you know you're progressing towards yeah on the opposite end though if you want like the happy kind of the happiest one it's a uh, it's a link between worlds the ending yeah. so hopeful in comparison to like the rest not all of them are downer but link between worlds just because of what link and zelda do for low oh, roll yeah is so hopeful especially yeah, it's, where it's like the scene before where it's really depressing it's really interesting that zelda games have covered such a wide variety of it helps endings. that there's you know like 20 games yeah yeah <laughs> but, but it is like different mario, compared to mario where mario, yeah like mario has a game on every nintendo system and it doesn't yeah but you know what mario's done and link hasn't mario's gone to jail yeah <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah, that. Yeah, I, didn't, I just didn't think about it because, like, I personally would pick Wind Waker as my hopeful one, but Link Between Worlds is uh, an equally good option. But like, just so many yeah. ranges between like having Down the, like, emotional torment to th I the future's never look brighter. Yeah, yeah. several just for how dark like, of uh, Majora's Mask uh, is, it probably is one of the more hopeful endings, though. After he uh, gets like, out of Termina, yeah, it's it's uh, it's like emotionally horrible in the beginning because you realize what's been going on, like what you have to do to save these people, and you like you know you can't tell any of them, like it's worthless to try to tell them. And it gets but, so much worse if you sit around for the three days. I yeah, mean, like you watch it all cycle. go down. Like you just know, like, but like in the end, being able to like save everything and prevent it from happening. So and finally, good. Finally, wipe that, that, you know, that thing that's been like, hanging over you the whole game away, mm -hmm. is is really. So I love Majora's Mask. It's yeah, so it's, good. It is very good. And that one gets even more interesting because that also plays into the the fan theory about it being the five stages of grief. Yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. That one. I want to say they've actually deconfirmed that one, but. And like that theory. They, I feel like I've heard that, but. I don't think Nintendo would ever of... agree that they made a game about the five stages of grief, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Like, But don't forget, Miyamoto is Bowser Jr.'s mother. <laughs> I hate that. That's what he said. I know he said that. <laughs> Someone asked him, and he's like, me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I do. I still think Nintendo's willing to be like, haha, weird sex thing that definitely can't physically happen, versus like, this is the same thing that you're oh, yeah, feel no, when your the... grandmother dies. <laughs> like, it's just yeah, it's it's true. two totally different. Yeah, I, That's I, why Cranky Kong will never die. Yeah, Cranky Kong's rather... not going to die. No. I'd rather make him age forever than be like, do we want to tell this story? No. Yeah. Um, Kingdom Hearts are pretty good at emotional ideas like that. Uh, Scary one that at least comes up to me, not now, but like at the time as a kid, Luigi's Mansion was like the scariest one I'd ever played. Because it's got an amazing atmosphere, but especially when you're a kid, it's like pretty good at being like, scary enough to be like it's scary but not scary enough to like i need to not I mean, play yeah, scare still, off the like, kids that's that's kind of you know like cameron mentioned pikmin 2 and like 
that idea, like, that really isn't all that scary in the grand scheme of scary things. But when you're the age that Cameron mentioned, like, that was, like, the first game he bought and stuff. So, obviously, young. Like, it still is impactful, even though, like, as a grown-up, you're not going to, like, you'd still be a little spooked. Like, oh, shit, I got to speed things up. You're not going to be like, I'm going to die. But when you're 12, that goes out the window. I would the water race. <laughs> It's I invincible. Know, like, and it I is invincible. To get well, also Cameron's obsessed with being like, I gotta get all the treasure. But the real strat is just ignore the boss, go beat it up, and then come back. And get that all is the, the actual strategy, but I don't like that strategy. That wastes time. Therefore, it does not exist. Yes. Yeah. They I actually waste time as if Cameron. there's any time in that game. That is the only Pikmin game that time doesn't matter. Well, Thanks. hey, Pikmin, but we we don't talk about that. Yeah, let's not talk about that. All right, well, uh, like... you got one more? Some, I feel like I'm missing mind. something, but... I mean, there's so real. I mean, there's really just so many good games, it's kind of hard to... Yeah. Oh, down I to gotta a, mention a this one. Segment. If there's a gripping because... enough story... Yeah, gripping enough story. It, it's Persona 5 Royal. It managed oh, to... Oh, absolutely. First off... It managed to keep me playing, but secondly, I don't know. At the time, I wasn't as – I've had that feeling of I don't want to play anything, and that one managed to not only get me to keep playing, but also kind of brought back why video games are so good and so great. Like, I want to stop playing. It's just there's that times when you're like – I don't want to play. Well, yeah, why do <laughs> – yeah, you don't want to play any game. I mean, that happens with all of us. But this. yeah, have a, a game that can make you feel so emotionally invested in these characters That's, and the story yes. that you this have to keep that playing. Game so I got, much. To, I, I got to be there for my home dogs. I got to see what happens. Yeah, I was. Uh, that happened a lot in um, Resident Evil Eight because I was like, I got to get this child back. I don't know why because it's not even real, but I have to get this child back. That, <laughs> that that bitch with a huge ass is gonna die, and I'm gonna get well, my baby back. That this is legitimately the most disappointing thing about Village. They spent a very long time promoting Lady Dimitrisk and her castle, and then she's barely in the game. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, the other characters are joe like also good and even more infuriating somehow like lady dimitres was already very infuriating like as her personality but like it gets it gets worse like these people like you actually start to want to like really like cut their limbs apart and sacrifice them to allah or something like you want to go especially on uh what's his face the one that wears shades and a hat no matter where he is oh uh he starts with an h uh yeah um Oh god. I know exactly who you're talking yeah, him, about. Yeah, like because he, I've seen some of the memes. His that... his section really makes you want to kill that. Like he's just so annoying, bro. Well, yeah, and I, you already fight him kind of once. You fight his pack beginning before you get kicked down a the escape thing. Yeah, yeah. He just throws you to the monsters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like it's what's really good about that game is that they mix it up like Lady Dimitrescu is like just evil and like annoying like she's so self selfish and disgusting and stuff so you you hate her then there's the one guy that's just disgusting like physically gross that's so, the second one right I th the... mm, no I that's have, the that's the third one i think have you have I, you fought him yet i kind of have an idea of i know that there are five unique ish bosses you've got the castle with lady dimitrescu you've got the horror house with the scary baby thingy you've got the one i can't remember you've got the guy with the giant axe and the pack of wolves and then you've got mother miranda as the final yeah and I, each one i so like so yeah like then there's the, the gross guy and then like the 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 doll is just like evil like you want to rid the evil like the same way you would want to rid a ghost out of your house like it's just not good you can tell there's like the devil in there and then uh, whatever his face is with the hat and glasses is the, like, 
It's like the male version of Lady Dimitres. Like he's not rich. Or I think anything. they're siblings. Yeah, he like he like he doesn't even. He's so gross. He doesn't even care about his own family, kind of thing. Like he really just wants to figure out what to do himself. Even though like it's not fully that, and I can't explain it because it's part of the story. But anyway, right, and then fair, Mother fair. Miranda is like you take the baby doll thing with the evil, but instead of just being like devilish, it's both devilish and you are the most horrible person I've ever interacted with in my life. Like you're doing. I'm not going to say, uh, you'll, Fair you'll enough. Like, when you get through the story, like you'll, like when you finally get to her and you, by that point, you've finally pieced together everything that's going on. Yeah. If I can like, get, wow. I just do the horror. It's, it's not that long. It's like the shortest section. True, and, but I keep getting pulled away from things and I don't want to start village up until you can beat a whole, it, a whole section at a time. Yeah. That's funny. right. Yeah. I get that. And I keep getting dragged to things because I'm like, if I'm going to beat Village, I want to get as much done in a section as possible. Because I know the longer I play, the less scared I get. It's that starting back into yeah, it. Yeah, that first hour or two. But also, back. I don't know. I know they're scarier, and that's why they like them. But I like the third part, the third character view ones more. Because they're not as... Yeah, you don't feel like you're the guy. You don't feel like you're, you're right. Ethan Winters. But the two with the Ethan, I'm like, they're scarier. Seven's not that really. After you deal with, uh, I hate their names, because there's Jack and there's Joe. Jack's the, yeah, Jack Baker's the main one though, right? He's Joe's the, he's brother. The yeah, Joe's the who, brother. You, that you can play in the uh, Save Zoe DLC. Yeah. Uh. Jack's like the scariest part of seven, and then it's all kind of not as scary. True. Like yeah. they build it really intense in seven, and eight's more, it never gets as scary as seven, but it does better as like being rebuilding yeah. waves of scariness. It never like drops, it never stops being scary. Right. Seven stops being scary. Eight doesn't really ever stop that mostly. Um, so, yeah, I get that. Um, I think with that, that's going to end us here. Two hours and 11 minutes. Thank you for Ooh. sticking with <laughs> us so much. That is uh, that is Oof. impressive. If you made it this far, I sincerely congratulate you. Um, thank you so much for listening, as always. Please share us with a friend. We post every Wednesday, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube.com slash Stormwind Games. Sometimes it goes up late on YouTube because Cameron's computer hates him, and he hates everybody else, apparently. So stick with us. I promise it'll go up at some point. Anyway, yeah, share us with a friend. Please put the word out. We love it. Add us on Twitter at All Night Gamers. Let us know what your most emotional video game and or video game moment is. We'd love to hear from you. And, uh, yeah, as always, we'll be back next week for more video game garbage. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.